What's up guys, it's Matty. I'm gonna cover everything you need to know about references. References are one of the essentials for knowledge management in RemNote. So I'm gonna cover what they are, how they work, and what makes them so special. So references are Rem that are linked within your database. It allows you to create backlinks between Rem so you can see how certain ideas and concepts are interconnected. You can reference specific concepts or even entire blocks of text if you want to. Really anything in a bullet point other than just a plain image or video can be referenced. So I think the best way would be for me to actually demonstrate how they work so you can understand the behavior in action. When you turn a rem into a reference, what you're actually doing is creating a new document for that rem. It'll be a top level rem or a rem with no parent. It would pretty much be the same as going into the sidebar pressing the plus sign next to documents and creating a new document and naming it something. That's pretty much what making a reference is doing. So I like to divide up making references into two different styles. The first being when you're actually writing or taking notes, and the second being while you're reviewing those notes. So let's demonstrate with an example. Here I am in physiology class and we're learning about how the heart works. So I read a sentence, the amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle each heartbeat is the stroke volume. Now, if I was a betting man, I'd say the odds of encountering stroke volume again in my studies is pretty high. It's a very important concept in cardiac physiology. Therefore, I think it would be a great idea to create a reference so I can link everything I learn about stroke volume together. So type open bracket twice to pull up the reference editor. It's this blue box here with the magnifying glass. I'll type in stroke volume, and then you'll see an option to create rem or use the hotkey control plus enter. And now stroke volume turns blue, which means it's been turned into a reference. And if I highlight my cursor over it, I get a preview of everything in that stroke volume document. So let me go ahead and open up this stroke volume document using shift click to open it in a second pane. And now this is the new document I just created for stroke volume. So anytime you create a reference this way using the open brackets and control enter, it'll create a reference with the hashtag stub. Now the stub just allows you to find all the references that you've created this way, just to track all of the different references that you might have made. Now once you reference a rem at least one time, a couple search boxes will appear in that document. The top one shows any places that you've already linked your rem. So if I expand it, you can see that note I just wrote about stroke volume and where it came from, linked to this document. Now back in my cardiology class, I continue learning and encounter the equation for cardiac output. Cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. Now I've already created a reference for stroke volume, so I don't have to make a new one. All I want to do is link this new stroke volume to that same document. So again, I'll use two open brackets, type in stroke volume, and this time I'm going to choose the stroke volume that I just created, not make a new one. This can get a little tricky because you can create multiple documents with the same name. Like I can make five different stroke volume rem all with stubs, and all this is going to do is make it harder to keep track of my notes. So instead, I'm just going to choose one that I already made and hit enter. And now if I open up this stroke volume document again using shift plus click, you'll see that there are now two references in this portal. And both of those notes for my cardiac physiology class are shown here. Any changes that I make to the actual stroke volume document, the one with the stub, is going to be reflected in every location. For example, if I delete some letters in volume, you can see that all of those changes are replicated. Another way I can view all the places that have linked stroke volume is to open up stroke volume in a portal. So I can do that by using control plus S to open up the search portal, type in stroke volume, hit enter. And now you can see that I just pulled in stroke volume. And on the right side, you can see a number next to this link icon. That number represents how many different times I've referenced stroke volume. And if I click on it, it's actually gonna show me all the instances that I've also referenced stroke volume. And I can click on these different places to go to that actual document. 
So the cool thing to note is that the entire stroke volume document will be linked, not just the header. So let me open up stroke volume by using control plus P, typing in stroke volume to open up that document. Now I can turn stroke volume into a flashcard if I want by adding two colons and giving it a definition. So stroke volume is n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume. I can add children to this rem as well. And if I hover my cursor over any reference of stroke volume, you can see that everything in the document will be displayed. So it's like having a personal page for everything I need to know about stroke volume linked to all the places that I've learned about stroke volume. Now let's say you decide you want to unlink stroke volume from some of these documents. Well, all you have to do is delete the reference and it'll be deleted in the document. And you can also delete it from the document itself. And just because I've deleted all the references to stroke volume, it doesn't mean that the stroke volume document gets deleted. As you can see, it's still here. It just has zero references. All right, let's move on to another example for using references. So now I'm quickly reviewing my notes and I want to create references for other ideas or concepts. So looking back at that equation for cardiac output, heart rate seems like a pretty high yield topic that I've probably encountered already in my studies. So I'm going to make a reference for heart rate as well. And to do this, I'm just going to highlight over heart rate, type one open bracket to bring up the magnifying glass reference editor and type create rem. So just like before, heart rate now turns blue. It's been made into a document with a stub. I'm going to hold shift, press click to open up heart rate in the second pane like I did before. And now let's say that I wanted to link heart rate to any other time that I might have used it in the past. So there's another search portal at the bottom of the document called find text references. So this is going to search my entire knowledge base for any time that I've used the phrase heart rate before. And as I expected, I've used heart rate many times before, 35 times to be exact. And I can now link all of these instances of heart rate to this document. And to do this, it's the same as before. I'm just gonna highlight over heart rate, type one open bracket, choose the new heart rate that I just made because I wanna link it to this document and uh, it should turn blue. I'm gonna do that just a couple more times. Highlight, one open bracket, hit enter. And now if I refresh this search portal, I can rerun this search. You'll see that the text references goes down a number. And that's because two of those have now been turned into references and they're not unlinked references anymore. I can also X out of this and you can see that there are now four references to heart rate and all the ones that I've just linked together show up here. So you can make references as you go along in your studies or while you're reviewing your notes to really develop a deeper understanding of how everything is interconnected in your studies. And finally, I wanna mention that there is one additional benefit to making references, which is found in our space repetition algorithm. By default, the RemNote queue will do its best to cluster together references to guide your studying. But if you'd like to turn this off and have the queue show you cards completely at random, you can change that by going into settings, pressing Q, scrolling down to ordering, and hitting reference clusters. Okay, so those are all the basics for using references in RemNote. Hopefully that helps you in understanding how the behavior works and what great utility you can get from them. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in another video.